and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions. I'm Rebecca Felgate, and today we're helping some of our viewers understand biology. Of course, we learn a lot about the reproductive system at school, although often only the basic facts are given. So today we are having a full frank discussion about why women have periods. Girls are born with a female reproductive system, although these lay dormant until a girl reaches puberty, which is usually starts to happen between the ages of 8 and 13. About six months before a female's first period, she will begin to get vaginal discharge, which is nothing to worry about. This is just the result of fluid glands in the vagina and the cervix, and it is intended to flush out any dead cells or bacteria. Around this time or before, a girl's body shape will change, breasts will develop, and hips may form. This is part of puberty and a sign that your body is preparing itself to be able to reproduce. A girl's first period is often referred to as a menarch and is lighter than they will experience throughout the rest of their menstruating years because the uterus walls have not yet begun to thicken during the menstrual cycle. While periods happen every 28 days, at first they can be quite irregular. So let's talk about the process of periods. Every 28 days or so, an egg is released from one of the girl's ovaries and travels down one of the fallopian tubes towards the uterus in a process that we call ovulation. Around seven days prior to ovulation, the female hormone estrogen triggers extra blood and tissue to build up and line the uterus. This is to prepare the uterus for pregnancy so a fertilized egg can have a thick and cushioned place to develop. If an egg is fertilized in the fallopian tubes, then it will then travel down into the uterus and attach to this thick wall. If an egg is not fertilized within three or four days, it doesn't attach to this wall, and instead, what happens is what we call a period. This is where the uterus breaks down and sheds the extra lining, and all of the tissue, blood, and unfertilized egg are ejected from the uterus and are pushed out the body through the vagina. The menstrual flow is the name given to how much blood is passed out of the vagina, and this can vary from girl to girl. Some have heavy periods with more blood, and others have lighter with much less. The duration it takes the body to expel the blood can also vary from female to female. Periods usually last between three to seven days, and usually only consist of around two tablespoons of blood, although it can look and feel like a lot more. Of course, it isn't always the type of blood that you will see if you cut your leg, for example. As the uterus lining is a mixture of blood and tissue, it can sometimes appear quite thick, although this is nothing to be alarmed at. At the end of a period, it is normal for women to have a brown discharge from their vagina. This is merely the last remains of the blood being flushed out with vaginal discharge. The first day of your period is day one of your menstrual cycle, and day 28 is usually the last day before your next period. Ovulation usually happens around 14 days into your cycle. There are a few side effects that come with having a period, and they are menstrual cramps, pimples, and often mood swings. The reasons for the cramps are down to muscle contractions in the uterus. Some people experience more of these than others, meaning more painful periods. The reason for the increase in pimple and mood variations are due to the surge in hormones that happens before and during menstruation. The monthly process of menstruating will keep happening unless a girl is pregnant up until she reaches the menopause. This is usually around age 45 to 50. A female is born with a finite number of eggs in her ovaries, and once they've all been released, the female stops producing the estrogen and progesterone needed to menstruate, and the periods stop. So there we have it, period science in under five minutes. You now know the reason girls have periods as a result of an unfertilized egg in the fallopian tube being flushed out to make way for a fresh, new, unfertilized egg. Simple, really. Certainly nothing to lose any sleep over or freak out over. So that is one question answered fully for you. Would you guys like any more anatomical questions answered? Let me know in the comments section down below. For now, thank you very much for tuning in to Life's Biggest Questions. I'm Rebecca Felgate. Remember to stay curious, stay safe, stay alert, and never ever stop questioning.